Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about similarity transformations. So this is all about transformations on the coordinate plane. Um, when we have similar figures on the coordinate plane, the way we determine, um, it says determine whether the dilation from figure X to figure Y is an enlargement or reduction, then find the scale factor. So here's the deal, when you are taking figures on the coordinate plane, and you are determining whether the dilation, which dilation, remember, means that the scale factor, if the scale factor is greater than one, it's going to be an enlargement. It's going to make the value larger. If the scale factor is a value that's less than one, it's going to make the figure smaller, which we call a reduction. Okay, so from X to Y, we're gonna figure out whether or not it's an enlargement or reduction. That's gonna be just obvious. Is the figure larger or smaller? And then I'm gonna show you how we set up the scale factor. So clearly from X to Y, this is definitely an enlargement. From figure X to figure Y, the value, uh, the figure is getting bigger. But now when I wanna figure out the scale factor, this has a length, X has a length of three, Y has a length of five. So when I go to set up my scale factor, I would say that to go from X to Y, I'm multiplying by a scale factor of 5 thirds. Now previously when we were talking about polygons and we said set up a scale factor, the scale factor would always be, oh, from the first figure to the second figure. But when you're talking about what you do to enlarge or make a figure smaller and you're multiplying by a scale factor, then it's actually the opposite way. So to go from 3 to 5 is actually multiplying by 5 thirds. So think about it if it was going from three to six. If this was three and this was six, I would say, oh, the scale factor is two because the way you go from a three to a six is you multiply by two. So the way you go from a three to a five is to multiply by five thirds. So it's the different, it's the opposite way of thinking from when you're talking about the scale factor um, of similar figures. Okay, so from X to Y is clearly a reduction um, because the values are getting smaller. And then when I make my comparison, how do I go from a length of four to a length of two? Now notice I went and I, sh I found the smaller sides. Um, I can also make a comparison if I was looking at the larger of the legs. So this is a length of six to three. So you can ask yourself, you know, how do you go from four to two or six to three it would undergo a scale factor of one half. X to Y, we can see here, it actually stays the same. And the way I know it's the same is that this is a length of three and this is a length of three, they're identical. Same thing here, a length of three, a length of three. So when you don't have any scale factor change, that means it's um, an isometry. So isometry means that the size of the figure did not uh, change. It's just a one-to-one -one relationship. And we call it a scale factor of one because I'm just literally multiplying by one to get the same thing, like an identity. Okay, from X to Y here, it, from X to Y is clearly an enlargement. And now if I wanted to, I keep moving my screen, I apologize, my scale factor. So a length of four becomes a length of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So to go from four to eight would be to undergo a scale factor of two. Here from X to Y, so from X to Y, the figures are definitely getting smaller, so that's a reduction. So to go from a length of six to a length of four, so six, if I go from a six to a four, I'm really multiplying by four six, which is two thirds. Okay, the second part of this is are they similar? So it says plot the given points and determine whether the figures are similar by using SSS, SAS, or angle-angle similarity. So here if I plot this triangle of ABC, so A is at negative four, three, B is at negative four, negative two, C is at one, negative two, and then I plot these points for triangle DEF, this is what I end up getting. And I can prove whether or not these are similar in many different ways. I can prove by two angles, which may be a little difficult to do. I can definitely figure out one of the angles here. Um, I could figure it out by side, 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 finding the lengths of all three sides and then seeing are they proportional to each other? Or um, 
side angle side. So finding two sides and the included angle. So probably side, side, side and side angle side are the easiest ways to go. Um, I definitely can see here that I've got two sets of proportional sides. So this has a length of five and this has a length of five. And then the other side is also a length of five to five. And I do see that these segments A, B, and B, C are perpendicular to each other. Uh, slope of zero, slope of um, unde an undefined slope. So I know that they are both right triangles. And we know that if they're both right triangles, that means they both have right angles and right angles are congruent to each other. So therefore you have one pair of congruent angles, definitely proportional sides. I mean, they're the same. And so these are definitely similar by side angle side. And we would call this um, an isometry because they are the same. Okay, so I have three more problems of this same skill. And of course, you know, watching this at home, um, if you do have access to graph paper and you can graph them and see what they look like, that would be great. If not, you're just following along with what I'm showing you. So if I was to graph these two triangles, this is what I would get. And then I would say to myself, okay, well, I definitely have um, perpendicular slopes, a slope of zero and a slope of um, that's undefined. So I know I definitely have one pair of congruent angles. I can't really tell anything about the other angles, but I can set up a proportion with the sides. Now four over three is unfortunately not going to be equal to seven fifths. So they are not similar. Even if I set it up as four over seven equal to three fifths, I'm not going to get a true statement. So even though they have a pair of uh, corresponding angles that is congruent, this, the, purport, the sides are not proportional. Next one, if I was to plot those points. So these are looking pretty good. Um, so I noticed that I have a side length of six. So I have one pair of sides that I know definitely matches up. Now using my distance formula, I could figure out the length from A to B. So if I make A to B actually my hypotenuse of a right triangle, one, two, three, four, five, and three. So five squared is 25, three squared is nine, 25 plus nine is 34. So this is the square root of 34. And then this is also one, two, three, four, five. Uh, that's length of three, a length of five. So it's the same thing. So this is also a square root of 34. And then when I look at these segments here, E to F, I notice it's also legs of three and five. So it's the square root of 34. And then of course the same would be here. So basically by side, 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 I would be able to prove that these are um, similar to each other. In fact, they're congruent. And now my last one, So again, right triangles. So I know that they definitely have one pair of congruent angles. Let's see, this has a side of three, a side of 2.5. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So are those sides proportional to each other? So three over six would have to be equal to two, a 2.5 over five, which is definitely true and they have a pair of congruent angles that's included. So by side angle side similarity, those two triangles are definitely um, similar to each other. I hope this video helped you. Thank you so much for watching.